Hi, it's Rob Moore here. Now this video is to help you get your book out there. Everybody's got a book inside of them, but for most people, it's still inside them. So how can you get your book a clear concept, uh, an idea that you're inspired by, uh, a clear visual or strategy of how to start writing it, and then crack on with writing it. Now, uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm not going to go on and look at Rob and what he's done over the years, but I have written now uh, nine books. Most, if not all of those, are bestsellers. Uh, a couple of them, actually, I'm not the named author, but I still wrote the book and I helped Mark Homer write his two books. It was a big driver behind that. And um, I I've certainly made a lot of mistakes writing books and I've written some shit books and uh, hopefully I've written some good books as well. And um, for sure, I've learned a lot along the way. Uh, so what are we going to cover in this video? Well, I want to take your questions um, because um, you might notice the wrinkles, the eyes. It's eight o'clock in the evening. I'm normally in, I get up really early and I'm normally in bed by now. I put a poll in the Disruptive Entrepreneurs group and you all wanted me to do videos at 8 p.m. So this is for you. So, um, you know, I really wanted to help you. Um, why don't you run your titles by me, your concepts? Why don't you run your ideas by me? If you should be writing a book on this, that or the other, you know, maybe uh, what you think might sell, what might be right for your brand or, or, or not. So um, and if you don't end up watching this live, you can still put your questions below and I'll probably keep an eye on it for the next couple of days. So, yeah. OK, so let's start with concept then. So I think the mistakes I made in the books I wrote in the early days was I didn't have a really clear, specific, unique or surprising or sticky or memorable concept. Now, I must admit, for many years, I didn't even know what that word meant. It's quite a, a fluffy word. I remember going to architecture and my architecture, um, what do you call him? Tutor. You see, I was never there. I was just getting pissed. Um, he said to me, what's the concept for your building? Well, it's like to have people in it. It's like, no, that's not good enough. And if you think of Frank Wright's Falling Water, the concept is the, you know, a creative take on falling water. Or those, I don't know if you remember those buildings that are just a, a pair of binoculars at the front. Or the gherkin. So it, so it is with your book. Your book needs a clear, strong content, uh, concept. So let's have a look. I'm going to try and multitask, which I'm terrible at. But bear with me, I'm going to go through the best sellers on Audible at the moment. Uh, what's number one? Money. Now, for all my flaws and weaknesses in what I've done and written some, you know, uh, money is a good concept. I mean, it is. Who doesn't want money? Who doesn't want to know about money? Um, and you know what? So most, most people love money. Some people hate money. Everyone's got a, a say on money. Money's ubiquitous. It's really important to all of us in society. So actually, it's probably the strongest concept of a book I had. So let's go into the bestsellers, Shop Audible. We'll go into the business bestsellers uh, and we'll look at, um, oh, that's the oh, my, uh, nine I am in all time, um, all books bestsellers. I was number one. Um, all right, so let, let's have a look. Business, where we go, business. I just want to go through some ones that are sticking near the top um, so that you can see some good, clear concepts. So we've got... Number one at the moment, um, but with money or behind money, or maybe probably um, about to go in front of money or drop behind money is Productivity Ninja. So um, Productivity Ninja, I'll give that a six out of 10. How to Win Friends and Influence People, good clear concept. Now that's quite a long title, but good clear concept. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, good clear concept. Deep Work, good clear concept. And, um, Something that I was taught when I was when coming up with concepts. Uh, now, there's more than one way to have a concept for a book. But if your concept is something new or surprising or challenges the status quo, that's a big tick in your concept column. So deep work's quite a good one at the moment because, you know, we've all been leveraging and outsourcing and spreading ourselves too thin and overwhelmed and confused for the last decade and social media and advertising, uh, overwhelm. And this book goes... Deep work. Results for focused success in a distracted world. Good concept. Mr. Newport, you get a tick from me, I'm sure. You will now die a happy man. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Now that's funny because that is a good, clear concept. It's a bit mysterious. Um, it doesn't exactly do what it says on the tin, but that sold, I believe, 41 million copies. Um, 
The four hour work week, good clear concept, does what it says on this tin. Influence, start with why, think and grow rich. These are all good clear concepts. So before you even start thinking about writing your book, warning to you, because you know what, I know so many people who have spent 20, 30, 40,000 words worth of time. I mean, that could have taken them months. 50, 60, I know someone who's done 100,000 words for a book and um, the concept's all muddled and messy and I'm not saying they've wasted that time, at least they've got stuff on paper. But sometimes it's hard to take something, a blog or your ideas um, that are fractious and it voluminous but everywhere and then try and edit it down. Often it's best to start with a, a, a blank slate. So if you want to ask me any questions about the concept of your book and what it is, in fact, I did a coaching call with someone this morning who's on... Um, on the video and she uh, coaches mums uh, you know, she writes a, a, a blog on um, being a mumpreneur and she's got a load of blogs and she wants to collate it into a book but you know a load of a load of blogs into a book isn't a clear concept you know a diary of a mumpreneur um, is a clear concept so you know and if in that case it needs to be a diary and then that concept drives everything like the visuals like it could be made to look like a diary the cover could be made to look like a diary there could be some sketches in in a pen or pencil on the inside or pieces of paper torn off and printed to look like a diary because the concept runs through into and in fact you could um, launch it in a series of um, what do you call them updates or whatever you call it when you um, write a bit of your diary and um, you can you know and even newspaper and newspapers and magazines you know sometimes they um when they release a book I'm um, Gerald Ratner when he released release his book you know they'll release chapters and you could come out in the form of a diary so but of course um you've got to be clear if that's the concept or not okay so yeah now with money um it took me a lot of time to work out what the concept was because, I mean, it sounds like money is a really easy concept, but if you think about it, there's books on how to make money and there's how to get rich quick. There's the think and grow rich type books. There's the mindset money books. There's the skill set and the tactics money books. There's the, you know, the, the history of money books, the story and psychology of, of money books. There's, there's a whole host. In fact, let's have a look and let's tie money into order. But I wonder what comes up first. Oh! So money, um, no more, make more, give more. You are a badass at making money. Making money, the internet of money, beach money, dark money. Money, a love story. The law of attraction, total money makeover, how to make money in stocks. The secret of attracting money. Other people's money. The end of money, F you money. Ma uh, money master the game. The end of alchemy. Money and banking, what everyone should know. Um, so there you go. Oh, there's about, what, 15 books there, but they're all different concepts. Now, my concept of money, which, to be honest, was a bit of a gamble, and I'm really grateful, thankful for all the comments, all the reviews, how many tens, hundreds of thousands of people, I don't know, are reading it at the moment, because um, the concept was to write a book about money that um, revealed the most about money that they'd ever been in one book, almost like an encyclopedia of money, the Britannica of money um, because I've read nearly all of these books I've read hundreds of books on money uh, and I found that like the ascent of money Niall Ferguson smart money smart kids the soul as in s-o-u-l money how to be smart with your money mad money so um, mind over money I thought that was quite a good book by Claudia Hammond so you know when I was reading all these books on money I was like yeah I got a bit of this I got a bit of that 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 wouldn't it be great if it was all in one place so that's what the concept for my new book money was now that's why it was so long now can I get away with it being 16 and a half hours if it's supposed to be the Britannica of money yes can I get away with it being 16 and a half hours if it's supposed to be on the mindset of money or some tactics around money no so you could give me a thumbs down or you know whatever fight faces you're pulling and giving me at the moment so concept drives everything spend if you're like for the first 50 hours of writing your book don't write your book spend 40 hours coming up with your clear concept so you know there's um there's a, a personal development book called grit that's a very good clear concept grit i mean you know it, it says what it does on the tin jamie smart wrote a book called clarity 
does what it says on the tin. Now, um, a great concept isn't just about a title. In fact, a great concept will make it easier for you to create your title. All right, so do we have any questions before I move on about concept? In fact, why don't I go into the community on my uh, Mac and have a look. Let's see if we can see it there. So if anyone has any questions, um, hi to everyone who's tuned in. Hi Sam, hi Ranjit, hi Raman, hi Mark, hi Charlotte, hi Glenna. You'll have to watch back, Sam. I can't tell you what you missed. You were late. Tut, 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 nor to you. Uh, all right then. So, right. Let me get the process up. So, um, without doubt, the hardest thing about writing a book is writing the bloody book. And you know what? Concept and title and subtitle and stories and anecdotes and quotes and research and, um, you know... It, all that stuff, your life experience, you know, the full list of contents, that stuff is easy compared to writing the thing. So um, I'm going to be doing a good few of these videos. I want to do a little series for a week or two and give you as much content as I can on writing your book, the marketing of it, a step-by-step -step plan on how to write it, in what order, how to leverage your time the best, whether you should transcribe it or write it yourself, the editing process, I'm going to do all that. But... The one thing I can't do for you, I'm afraid, I've, you know, I'll try my best to do everything for you, I can't write your fucking book. So because of that, I'm, I'm, I run one book writing boot camp every year. Uh, it's in October, I actually take my um, family away to Centre Parks um, and I roll in a sort of a family holiday. So um, if you want someone to beast the heck out of you, to w crack the whip on you to get your book written, you should consider that. I'm not going to talk about that now. I might um, give you the dates or something like that at the end. Um, this is, it was only a very small number of us. I normally take nine or ten people max. I'm sitting there with you all day, every day. 23 minutes on, five minutes off. 23 minutes on, five minutes off. 23 minutes on, five minutes off. Break. 23 minutes on, five minutes off. 20, and I'm just there breathing down your neck because it's the only way you get your book written. There are so many people who haven't you know, finish their book. Like, what a huge waste of time to do 100,000 words and not have your book finished. Your book isn't finished until it's live on Amazon, on Audible, on iTunes, on Kindle. Okay, so bear that thought in mind. It's only for people who actually want to write a book, not you window shoppers, you know, who are just interested in getting some free content. Uh, Sam has just asked, actually, did I do that to Mark? Yes. Now, the first time, Sam, we did this, um, I, we paid um, for a very expensive trip to somewhere in the Caribbean. What's the best place in the Caribbean? I I'm not very good with holidays, as you know, I don't like them. Um, Sandy Lane, yeah, we stayed on Sandy Lane there. And um, like, I did this on purpose, so staying on on Sunday, it must have cost us 15 or 20 grand, we flew first class, we took um, my Gemma, Mark's Gemma, and the main reason I did that is because Mark would have a baby at the thought of wasting 20 odd grand on a holiday, and it wasn't a holiday, it was to write his book. And I got him, like, what, how far is that? Six, 7,000 miles? I don't know, the other end of the planet away. Uh, and I had to invest that time and that money. And I literally drag him out, drag him out of bed at 6.30 in the morning, feed him coffee. There you go, Mark. It's not your coffee. You're like, oh. uh, and I just stood this close to him. And um, he dictated what he was thinking. And I wrote it, wrote it, wrote it, stop. Expand on that, wrote it, stop. Expand on that, wrote it. Sorry if I offended some of you with that little gesture there. I mean, that's a pretty normal thing to do in Peterborough. Um, and yeah, for 10 days, I, it pulled out. Now, I think Mark's books are normally 40,000 words, which for me is an intro. Um, but yeah, it took me 10 days of sweating him, you know, like he's, like he's in the Priory Clinic or something, sweating out an addiction, um, because I know how to do that. Mark never, ever, ever would have written his books if it weren't for that. It's just a stone cold fact, and he'd tell you the same thing. Um, yeah, and so, so like, that's kind of what I do on the Book Writing Bootcamp, but with sort of nine or 10 of you, but I am in your face, I am pretty relentless. Uh, I do, you know, because like, if you leave and you haven't finished that book, then my book writing bootcamp didn't do what it said in the tin. But anyway, I want to move on from that. But yes, that's the only way Mark would have got his books out of there. Um, it's, you know, the only way. All right. Um, ah, so Gemma said, do you find it useful to write at a certain time of day? Well, um, I talk, I, I must answer 15, 20 questions a week on, you know, compartmentalizing your diary, managing your diary, that kind of thing. I'm too busy. I haven't got enough time. 
Uh, for me, um, I make sure that I ring fence between 6 a.m. and about 8, 8.30 a.m. when no one can disturb me, where I've just had my coffee, so I'm, I'm in a good mood, I'm buzzing, the ideas are flowing, creativity, you know, is, is plentiful. You only need an, an extra shot in your Costa coffee to do that to me. I'm, I'm an easy date. Um, so I find that if I don't get most of my content written before sort of 9, 10 a.m., it, it really doesn't happen that easily. And you, if you'll notice on all the social media groups I'm on, um, you know, the Disruptive Entrepreneur, the Progressive Property Community, if you follow me live on, on Facebook, you'll notice that most of my content is, is, is out. Uh, a lot of my articles are written before sort of 7 a.m. and my live feeds are normally 8, 8.30. Now, um, about 8, 8.30 a.m. is a good time to do live content. 8 p.m. is actually the best, as you'll see in the community. I don't know why I'm pointing down there, but... Um, you'll see in the community 8 p.m. is also a good time to get live content out there. Um, unfortunately, it's normally past my bedtime. Um, so, yeah, for me, it's best to write 6 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. Now, if you wrote for two and a half hours every day, you'd get a book out there. Um, then it might take you between one and six months, depending on the concept of the book, the length of the book, you know, how stream of consciousness it comes out of you, or do you have to read every sentence back and forth? And Because some people just write. Like, um, you know, Paul, Paul O'Mahony, who's you know, one of the biggest social media experts in the world, um, he came to the last book writing boot camp. He's coming to this one to write his next book. And he can just write. Like, he'll do over a thousand words in 23 minutes. That's another thing we do at Book Writing Boot Camp. We time every 23 minutes and how many words you get out. And so then we can work out how many sessions we think you'll, you'll get your book done in and therefore how many days you need to be here and if you have a rest day or not. Because if you can get it out in good time, you'll have a rest day. If not, you ain't never no rest day in my boot camp. Um, and so he was getting over a thousand words out in every 23 minutes. So he's doing, what, 3,000 words every third of a day, 9,000 words a day. You know, that's pretty good. But, you know, he wasn't going back and editing it and back and editing it. It was just stream of consciousness. Whereas, you know, like, I'll, I'll probably write a bit less, but I'll often write a paragraph and read it again and go through and tweak it a bit. So I kind of half edit as I write. Whereas he just goes blur. And there's other people. I mean, there were other people. And so Mark and Sam have said, wow, yeah. There are other people who are writing three or 400 words every 23 minutes. But they're writing in a more critical eye. And they're almost half editing. Now, back to who was it who asked the question? Sorry, because I've got more questions come in now. Um, forgive me uh, who it was who wrote, asked about the um, best time, a good time. But uh, I'll find you. Where are you? I'm going to find you. Yes, Gemma. Um, but Gemma, um, you should write when you are most inspired and enthused and energetic. And, you know, like for a lot of creative types, arty types or people who do a lot of writing, they work best uh, at sort of 8, 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night. I know Mark's home my business partner, his wife, that would be weird for him because he, he was fiance last week. But she does loads of work at 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night. And that when she seems to be on it because some people find it hard to to sort of wind down their brain. And a great way to, if your brain is going at nine o'clock at night, to wind it down is to write, because it's very cathartic. It's almost therapy. <laughs> you know, your brain's like, you know, often if you can't sleep, get up. If you can't sleep and write, just <laughs> And, um, you know, it's, it kind of like clears your mind. So you should say, so, you know, just because I write at, you know, six, seven a.m. or whatever, it doesn't mean it's right for you. But what you must do is compartmentalize that time. You need to lock yourself away. That's why I flew Mark. To Sandy Lane. That's why I'll take five or so of you to the book writing boot camp in um, Centre Parks. Now I used to think Centre Parks was really naff, but actually I've got two kids and it's great for them. But also you're surrounded by trees. It's pretty hard to get Wi-Fi there, which will piss you off, but it'll be good because I can, you know, um, deliver my guarantee that you'll get your book written. And um, it, it's a nice place because you've got the nature. I find when writing, it's good to have a view of nature. There's something it does to our brain. Um, it's it's a, the, the exploring, discovery part of our brain, which helps our evolution if we see nature. It, it'll give you endorphins. So it's nice to have a bit of nature in the background and not just look at my ginger beard for 10 days. Imagine that, poor you. Um, so isolate yourself. You must have no distractions, no one walking in. Um, it can take like five, seven, 10 or more minutes just to task jump from one task to another. So you're there writing the book, you've just got in the flow, you did all your research, it was a bit slow to start. You've just written 28 words and your child comes in and then you're distracted and it can take you 10 minutes or more to get back in. And then when you're in, you're like, what was I doing? You have to read over again and you're not in the flow. And if that keeps happening, this is why people, you know, if you write your book at home or you write your book in your normal life, 
statistically, I don't know what it is, but it'll be like, no, 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 uh, and I have written a book like that, and it's been quite fractious. And by the time you get to the end of it, and you go back to the start of it, it's like, bloody hell, this thing's all over the place. It's scatty. And you can almost sense in writing it that I was getting interrupted every two freaking minutes. So, um, yeah, you know, like, I now write my books mostly by isolating myself. Now, sometimes I've got a, um, a special room, a special writing room kind of over there. Um, which I isolate myself in, but even now when the kids are at home, I can, even just hearing them and catching something can take you off. Um, I'm, I have a lot of ideas, but I find it hard to grab onto them. And if I've not, you know, like if I've had an idea, you could probably notice by doing this live feed, I'm a bit all over the place. This is my bedtime, remember? But like, you know, if I get interrupted for a second, I could have missed the best idea or the best story or whatever. So you don't want to do that. All right. So let's go back. Um, how many words should the average book be? Uh, it shouldn't be. Um, I really don't think it should be. And um, I'll actually, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go through some concepts. Where's my Evernote folder? I'll go through some concepts for books. So um, if you want to write the Britannica Encyclopedia of Money, you know, the go-to book for money, all things money, and it's 30,000 words, it's not going to work, is it? So, you know, a, a big novel or, a, a, you know, some kind of non-fiction book which has a big thing to deliver in a big subject, it can be. 100,000 words plus, 150,000 words. Now, I always want to over-deliver on value. And you know me, it takes, you know, why well, use one word when you can use 78,000? Um, so I often write long articles, long books. Um, 30, 30 to 40,000 is kind of deemed as the minimum for a book. Um, if you get a book and it's like really skinny, you can feel a bit like, well, oh, that's crap. Now, Who, Who Moved My Cheese is a very skinny book, and that's great, but it all, essentially it is the analogy of a mouse trying to find the cheese that moved. You can't do 150,000 words on that freaking concept. Uh, but it is a great concept, Who Moved My Cheese. Richest Man in Babylon is a very short book, and I've read some really good short books. Um, I would say if it's anything under 30,000, it's likely there's not a lot of content in there, unless it's one very simple concept. Now, let's say I had a concept of play or play in the workplace. I don't know, I'm just making this stuff up. But if you had a very clear, simple concept, you could maybe go under that. Um, my publisher says kind of 40,000 words is like, you know, 40, 50,000 words. A lot of books are in that range. I wrote 160,000 words for money. And my publisher told me in our contract that my, the maximum my word, the words my book should be is 120,000, which I missed and he admitted to remind me after I'd written 160,000 words. Now, he's told me that is because of the size of it. So if it's too big, it'll be harder to get into Waterstones and Waterstones won't necessarily publish it. So, you know, you, you probably want to be 30, 35,000 to 120,000 would be the max. 35,000 would be the... I could have just said 35,000 to 120,000, couldn't I? Just a bit of self-coaching there. Um, but yeah, you didn't know. I needed to tell you the story of that. Now, the new book I'm writing is called... Oh, I've got to log in. Idiot. Um, it's called Start Now, Get Perfect Later, or Get Perfect Later, Start Now. It's, I haven't quite worked out which way around it is. And um, it's, it's basically about time management, managing your time, reducing overwhelm, getting clarity, focus, productivity, all that kind of thing. And because of that, um, concept, I don't want to write a 160,000 word book on that because it's kind of out of concept, isn't it? You don't want to spend 16 hours listening to something when you want to sort your life out because it's going to take you two weeks to listen to the fucking book. So what I've, conceptually, what I've done is... Um, either one or two pages per um, chapter, you know, or per content of the concept, um, so that it's training me to write um, in, you know, more of a content condensed form. It's a good skill for me to learn to write four pages worth of content in one or two pages. And conceptually, you can open it and go, oh, okay, so this is how to get rid of overwhelm. This is how to get rid of procrastination. This is how to write your to-do list. This is how to manage your time. And it's one page, or it's two pages if it's a long part. So again, you know, so you can use it as a, a reference, for example. Um, Tim Ferriss, who wrote Tools of Titans, he collated all of the content um, of all of his podcast interviews with all of his great guests. And it, but he, he and it's a huge book, and, it, and I, guess, I guess it must be 180, 200,000 words, maybe more. But he's written it as almost like a coffee table book that you can go in and go out and go in and go out of. And he's able to have, to have, to have used all of his content in his podcast. Uh, and then collate it. So, um, Khadija, you know, we were talking today, you've just messaged me that question. 
you know, it, it, maybe there's a way you can model the, what, what he did because he took all the existing content and he created a concept out of it. Now, you've got to be careful when you take a load of existing content because if you just take existing content, but the concept isn't clear or good, it's not going to work. Or people are going to go, you've just put 52 blogs into a book here and, and I've read the blog. So, you know, like, what, what's that all about? Whereas he, cre he called it Tools of Titans, which I think is a really good title. I think that's great. Um, and so you'll get away with it being a bit fractious and then you've got various different people that he interviews. You know, you've got Wim Hof, the Iceman, and you've got MMA fighters, and then you've got Arnold Schwarzenegger, and then you've got billionaires, and then you've got venture, venture capitalists. They're all different. And how do you get all of them into a clear concept? Tools of Titans. It's really good. So, um, Khadija, you know, you're probably, if you can work out a way of doing that for all the blogs you've written, um, because the, the call I had with Khadija today, and by the way, Khadija, if you're happy with me sharing some of the things we said, give me a thumbs up. I'd never share any confidential information. If you don't want me to use you know, our discussion, then give me a thumbs down or a, an angry face. Um, but I'm going to do it anyway, so I, I'll have to um, beg for forgiveness and ask for permission. Um, but Khadija pumps out a load of content. She writes a lot of articles. And she's already got a lot, a lot of content out there for a book. And she wants to collate all of these blogs into a book. Now, that's, that, that's a great thing, but it could cause you a lot of problems. You get your clear concepts. You go through, say you've done one blog a week for 52 weeks. So you go through all of those. And when you've got your clear concept, like, um, you know, um, being a, let's say, I mean, this is not a good one, but it's niche. So let's say you were like um, a book for mumpreneurs of kids under six, let's say. Then you can go through your blogs and anything that's for mumpreneurs who are 17 or 35, you know, or they've got older kids, that's not relevant to. Um, or there's, there's women entrepreneurs who don't have kids that's not relevant to, and you might find that you've got 35 blogs left that you can collate the content in. Now, um, as you'll discover, if you decide you want to come on the Book Writing Bootcamp with me and put your money where your mouth is and actually write your freaking book, the hardest thing for me, which is the opposite to Mark, the hardest thing for Mark is writing the book and getting what's in his head out. The hardest thing for me is knowing what to take out. So um, getting money the audiobook from 165,000 words down to uh, they've got it down to 108,000 at the moment but we're up, we're kind of negotiating to put some more back in so it'll end up being 120,000 that's like the, a, a, that is a painful process I can't do that I'm just no good at it at all because I just feel it's all important if I didn't think it was important I wouldn't have written it so knowing what to take out of your book and the content to not have in it essentially if it's not strictly on concept out, bin, in the bin, park it. Um, but like when I was editing my own book, I've edited it about five times now, so much so that I had to just go, oh, I don't, I'm not doing it anymore. Um, I would take 5,000 words out and it would be like the, the pulling teeth. It'd take me a week of reading it all, deleting sentences and words and looking at the word count every hour. How, have I got rid of 60,000 words? Oh no, I've got rid of six words. Uh, and what I'd end up doing, though, is seeing something think, oh, that needs a bit more research, that needs a bit more proof. Oh, that's a great concept, I'm going to go and research that, or I missed this bit. So I'd take 5,000 words out and put 5,000 words back in. I did that five times, so I went from 165,000 words to 165,000 fucking words in, like, five weeks. What a dick. So uh, what I did was said to the publisher, there's my book, it's yours. You edit it, you take, you take 30,000, 40,000 words out. Uh, it's like the scariest thing in the world. It's like giving your baby to a butcher. You ain't never going to do that. And then, when it, and then they're coming back to me saying, oh, do you want to have a look over our edits? And I'm like, no, I don't want to have a look over the edits. Because I have a, a look over the edits. I'm going to be like, you've ruined it. You've taken that out. You've taken that out. But, you know, they're the ones that told me a book needs to be a certain size. So that Waterstones and W. H. Smith will take it and stock it, and you know, so that pe you know, the people will buy it in, in um, airports and uh, you know various different types of stores, and the the, the 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 ideal amount of words that someone can consume, and the, the way that they typeset it and lay it out, and um, yeah, that's so you know why have a dog and bark yourself? All right, wow, we're um, we're covering a lot here, but there's kind of no linearity to it. But that's okay, this is the first one. I'm gonna do a few of these. All right, so let's see if we've got some more questions. How many months were spent re researching money? What's 11 years times 12? There you go, 134, is it? I don't know, 130 odd months. Uh, so um, really, I know that's not the question, David, so I will answer your question, but you know, like, for as long as I've been learning about money, there was research about money with everything I learned. And then, of course, all the books I've ever read on money 
I've read about three, just over 3,000 books now. Um, now, and I've earned, that's in the last 11 years because I didn't read a book before that. Um, and I would say at least a third of them are money or money related subjects or business and money. So I was always researching it. And then, of course, when I'm building my companies and I make my first million and then I make deca millions and then I build my companies and everything else, then, you know, you're learning all the time, aren't you? Um, hardcore actual write. I'm going to write the book money research probably about mm, six months, six to nine months, I would say. But I write while I'm researching um, because I'm good at sticking ideas out there. Um, and not everyone is, uh, but, you know, I try to say that humbly, you know, I'm not, I'm not the best at it, but, you know, like I've got, because sometimes I've got too many ideas. So, you know, like um, on Book Writing Bootcamp, what I'll do with you if you are not, well, I'll probably get you ready before the book bootcamp, but if you're not, what we'll do is I'll get a stack of post-it notes and I'll just be like, right, hit me. What's your ideas for your book? Bang, 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 bang. And you'll start trying to get a bit technical. Ideas, 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 concepts, ideas, chapters, contents, concepts, top level. And I'll get a post-it note, I'll write a post-it note, stick, 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 stick. And we'll just fill a wall full of post-it notes. And then what we'll do is order them into, these are, this is a chapter, this is a section, this is a, a, a certain part of the book and another part of the book. So in Life Leverage, I had the, um, the strategies and tactics part. Um, so I, you know, I have different sections of the book. You know, in money, there's the history section. So everything about in the past of money goes in the history section. Um, so, so I can write while I'm researching, and I have a researcher, a full-time researcher, that um, actually does a lot of the research for me um, because research isn't my strongest point. Um, the great thing about having a publisher is they challenge all your research and you have to go back and prove it, and, you know, because obviously, you know, there's, there's lawsuits and you have to be very specific with what you're writing through a publisher because the publisher could ultimately be responsible for the words you write. So, um, yeah, we're going through the process of um, digging deeper in our research at the moment. Um, now, life leverage, that was a bit less because that was, um, so I, I can, words I'm not sure, but let's look at time. So it's got, I'll tell you what's quite interesting. Well, I find it interesting because I love talking about and I'm really into books. I mean, if I didn't write them, I could talk all day about all the books I've read because I love it. So um, money is 16 hours and 24 minutes, and that's about 165,000 words. Life leverage. Well, I speak fast, as you know. So um, I've probably, um, if you compare me to Peter Baker, who um, voiceovered, uh, life leverage, I speak a lot faster than him. So life leverage is eight hours and seven minutes, so it's almost half the length. But it's, yeah, it's probably a little bit less than half because I speak faster. So your probably, life leverage is probably 75,000 words, 70,000 words, something like that. And um, the research for that, probably four months. But again, you see, I'll only write books on what I do and what I know. Now, I know there are a lot of authors and they'll write books about something that they'll go and, you know, hide away and just study for two or three years. But it wasn't necessarily what they did or what they knew before. And then that's fine, I respect that, authors are authors. I mean, I, if it, first and foremost, I was a business person, you know, and I was someone who, you know, a, what they call a self-made business person. Um, but, I, I, you know, for me, I've got to write about something that I've done for a long time because then I've got integrity and I can back it up and, and I feel that there's this authenticity and also, you know, I've got to have this big passionate interest in it. So like I've done a lot of the research through just living it through my life. Um, if you're going to pick a new subject, if I was going to pick a new subject, I'd probably want to do at least 18 months of research um, because, you know, like research is my favourite subject, but research is really, really important in a book. And a lot of the time, if you're talk, if you like, if you're, um, if let's go back to those concepts I said that a, um, a, a, a concept of a book should have. So it should be clear, the concept, or it should be sticky or memorable or shareable or unique or a new take on something that's already existing. Or um, it should be challenging the status quo. I don't know if I said that, but if I didn't, I have. Also surprising. So, uh, you know, they're the things that you want to have in your, you want to write those down in your thought process. Now, you probably can't do them all. Um, so clarity. The book by Jamie Smart, Smart is clear. It's just a clear concept. It's not particularly sexy. It's not particularly new. Um, just like deep work, that's not new. In fact, but what deep work is, is um, it's almost like uh, not understanding the cycle we're in. So, you know, Tim Ferriss wrote 4-Hour Workweek. You know, I wrote Life Leverage. 
at some point everyone's going to go i don't need any more leverage books or outsourcing books or whatever you know because they've probably done that so much they're so thin what they need to now know how to do is focus so you'll find that deep work comes out and there'll be books called in fact jamie smart wrote focus you know and then there'll be so you know so things kind of reinvent a bit like fashion you know when things come in and fashion out of fashion but then they come back in fashion again so if you've got something that you want to write about but you think well everyone's writing about that it's personal development it's you know, it's something that is common. How can you bring back into fashion something or go against the fashion and change the the course, you know, change um, conceptually, go, uh, bleh, 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 bleh. I need a drink. I've got a sore throat here. Cheers, though, and stank, thanks for tuning in and thanks for staying in this long. We've done 34 minutes. Who'd have thought it? Yeah, so a new way of an, an existing concept or theory, you know, um, what, what will be the new rich dad, poor dad? What will be the new think and grow rich? What will be the new how to win friends and influence people? What will be the new seven habits of, habits of highly effective people? Um, you know, those books have lasted 20, 30, sometimes 70, 80 years. They're personal development books. There's a million personal development books, but there's always space for a personal development book because we're all looking at it. So the, another, here's another good concept. Um, the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Uh, now, that's a really good concept. It's quite a long title. When you get away with a long title, if you've got a clear concept, like how to win friends and influence people, the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Um, that, that's a very good, clear concept. Now, um, that is just like, you know, there's sort of how... There's Dale Carnegie wrote, Stop Worrying, Start Living. Um, I think it was Susan Jeffers wrote, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. Um, there's, but there'll be loads of books on that, but it's just the way it's written. It's written in a very now... The concept I'm talking about, not the book... Um, it's written in a very now way. You know, that there's a lot of this um, spirituality come into personal development and sort of um, minimalism and uh, detachment. A lot of that is, you know, meditation is, is getting very big. So that, 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 all that stuff is in the here and now. And so then someone, so basically it's not, the book's not called, fuck you, I don't give a shit. Fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. Which is also, you know, but um, Rage Against the Machine, um, homage there. Um, sorry if kids are watching, you should know what I'm like. Um, but it's like, it's taking what's now uh, and putting it into a concept that, you know, people are going to, they're going to go, yeah, I get that. I think it's really clever, the subtle art. So, uh, yeah, just something to think about. Now, um, with concepts, you'll probably want to get help. Uh, and as you know, uh, thank you, by the way, because you always help me. Because if I've got book titles or ideas, I always say, here, look, this is what I'm writing about. This is the two or three sentence concept. And at that stage, it's not very clear. I test if I can say it in a, you know, in a clear way. So let's do a little example of how I might do that. So you, you should go on communities, go to SurveyMonkey, go to Facebook groups, do polls. You should share your book ideas and your concept ideas. Try and articulate them as, as short as possible. Give them a few choices and say, hey, look, which one? Um, and, you know, you want... That the people who are going to buy your book are the, are the people that you should honour the most in creating content for them. You know, what's the point in writing a book that you love but no one else loves? So my new book, my new books, I've got a load here. So one concept I've got is the happiness delusion. So um, because I think that people think that happiness is the eternal sitting and being content with your life and doing nothing. But if we all did that, then the human species would die out. And you know that you have felt the most happiness in your life when you've endured a big challenge or you've created something. Why do people do jigsaw puzzles that are 1000 pieces? I mean, what the fuck is that all about? You know, because you get that feeling of happiness and fulfillment that you did a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle. So the hard things in your life are what create big surges in happiness and contentment and fulfillment and growth. So happiness is growth. It's not sitting on your ass and meditating and doing nothing. So um, th there's a concept of happiness delusion, but it's just an idea at the moment. So I'd go on and ask you what you think about that. And, and also, I'm you know, a lot of people at the moment, oh, life's just about being happy, man. And, you know, everything's just about being happy and raising your kids. I just want everyone to be happy. I just think that that's nonsense. I think that you should have challenges in your life to grow and overcome, to strengthen you, to give you resourcefulness, creativity, to give you some grit, to give you some backbone, to give you some strength. And then when you achieve something that's meaningful, that took time, that took struggle, that's real happiness. And you don't get that all day, every day. Anyway, I'm, I'm not here to test all the concepts of my book. One, so I wrote here, I'm just going to write what I sketch out. So I'm going to read what I sketch out. By the way, this is a bit embarrassing because some of this is going to be shit. That's why if you've got any ideas for books, businesses, 
write them in an Evernote folder because if you come back to them a week later, you know, when you're not, you're not high on coffee or whatever, and you think, oh, that's a bit of a shit idea. So I've put here um, a short book on compartmentalizing your diary because about 15 to 20 people a week ask me about creating a diary template, managing their diary, managing their time, they're overwhelmed. I thought partly just to have an answer to all the questions I get all the time because I get sick of saying it and there's not, nothing against anyone asking me. It's just I get sick of hearing my own voice. Um, so I thought about writing a really short book. So going back to all the questions on the book, a really short book, like 5,000 words or 10,000 words, just a step-by-step -step clear system. Here's to how to compartmentalize and create a diary template for you to effectively manage your life with the most amount of leverage. I've got, and I've written in the com, uh, um, parentheses here, sexier title. So a short book on compartmentalizing your diary. I've put in loads of people struggle with it. It'd be a really short book. I take the section from Life Leverage and expand it. And I get a few stories and diaries of the world's most successful people and how they manage their diary. And I think that's a solid concept. Um, and actually looking back at it, I thought it was a good concept at the time and I think it is now. But if I go into the disruptive entrepreneur community and 6,200 reviewers say, Rob, that shit, get back in your hole, then I won't do it. So I put it how to be lucky or how to be a lucky bastard. That's another one. Get motivated. It's funny because, you know, most of my videos that are shared the most uh, and my podcasts that I listen to the most are, are around motivation. And that frustrates me a bit because I'm not a motivational guy. You know, I don't like to pump people up full of hot air. You know, there's plenty of Americans who do that. Nothing against them. There's a lot of them that are just like whoop, whoop, uh, 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 pump, pump. And that's fine. But I want to give you a bit more depth and a bit more knowledge. And I want to give you some strategies and tactics that not everyone is giving you. And um, a bit more of a, um, a disruptive way rather than just hustle, grind, get up early, work hard, don't sleep, you loser. Um, but all the analytics of all the videos and the podcasts and the stuff I do, if there's how to get motivated in it, that gets loads of views and shares and likes. So I put here, get motivated because, you know, like I might want to cash in on that train, you know, because I, I want to write books that you want. I want to write books that people want. And if that means I've got to make a bit of a compromise in, in the art that I create because you want it, I'll do that. But I probably want a better title um, than that. I've got here the business of business. So how to start, scale and whatever business. I've put the gift of the struggle, which is a bit like um, a book on the happiness delusion. Uh, what do I, I've got bring, full stop, it, full stop, on. Which is, I guess, like a concept around um, motivation. I want to write a book on pricing. Um, commercial development for Mark. So I've even got Mark's book in here. I've got loads of concepts. Possibility, a book of hope. What the fuck is that? <laughs> that shit, I can't believe I wrote that. I should delete that now. So no, a lot of them are bad ideas. Happiness is not the answer. So that's something, you know, happiness is not the answer or the happiness delusion. It will, it, it does have the surprise element, the, the shock element or the counterintuitive element. And a lot of the books that have that, uh, they do really well. A recruiting legends. So I'd like to write a book on attracting talent one day. Um, yeah, here's all my money notes. The paradox of balance. Hmm. The paradox of paradox. Yeah, that shit as well. How to do what you know. The amount of people I teach who say, oh, I know that, I know that, I know that, I know that. So a book on how to actually do what you know, how to implement what you've learned. So anyway, there's a load of concepts. So, um, yeah, have you got any other questions? Let's have a look here. Let's see if we can. So, David, I hope that answers you. Is it okay to quote other people without their consent, Ollie? No, it's not. Um, I always like to honour people. Um, and, um, yeah, I don't nick other people's content. Um, I, might t I might be inspired by them, and I might put my spin on it and create a new identity, change it 30%, 40%, because that's what they did, and the people that inspired them did, and the people that inspired them did. Because I've read the personal development books that of the... Um, that the people who wrote the personal development books that I read were inspired by. You know, you can go back and go back and go back. Um, so if you're going to directly quote someone, honour them. And you know what? It's smart to honour your mentors and the people who have helped you along the journey. A lot of people kind of don't want to do that as if it's, you know, well, people will think I'm less credible. So, um, no, honour them. You know, I, I, I reference John Demartini quite a lot in the money book. I've done, there's a lot of um, research and um, experiments that are in the book. And I, you know, I want to honour them. You know, I'd say at least... I'd say one fifteenth of the book of money, my book, uh, money, is inspired by the, the, the work I've done with John Demartini and the stuff I've learned from him and the stuff he's helped me on. All right, is there a strategy to writing a book? Wow. 
Um, Carl's written here, 25 million sold in about six pages. I don't know what the six pages reference is. Is that um, who moved my cheese? But there you go, concept. Concept is everything. Would I write a book that's six pages that sell 25 million copies? Fuck yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. Would I have 24 and a half million one-star reviews? For no, maybe not. Maybe I wouldn't. But um, yeah, concept. Okay. Is there a strategy to writing a book? Uh, well, um, yes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read you a little process of getting your book to, ready to get your book written. Because by the way, the worst thing you can do is just start writing your book. And I know that's you think you should do that. You shouldn't just start writing your book. You will waste your time. Brian Tracy said to me, he said, Rob, five minutes, no, one minute spent in planning saves five minutes in doing. And it's definitely like one minute spent planning a book probably saves like half an hour in writing a book. So I'm going to give you 13 steps now. So before the 13 steps and after the 13 steps, let me just tell you that um, on the 19th to the 29th of October, um, I am running my one off a year. I only do this once a year book writing boot camp. So you can come with me and nine or so other book writers. They'll be writing different kinds of books, so you'll learn from each other. Um, and the, the sole focus of the Book Writing Bootcamp is to write your book. Now, no, all, all the pomp and pageantry and fluff around it all, there's loads of people giving you courses on how to write a book, but they're telling you what to do, but they're not making you do it. But this Book Writing Bootcamp is very unique. You come with me on my personal holiday, um, you know, where I often, I'll, I'll nip out a few times and go and play some golf with Bobby and, and we'll have dinners together and stuff like that. But, and I will be writing my next book. It won't be this one, not money, the one I'm writing now, which is Start Now, Get Perfect Lay, will be the next one. Um, so we'll be in it together, together, and you won't leave until you've written that book. And uh, we've got 10 days and you'll get a day or two break if you can get it before that. If not, you won't. So diarise 19th to 29th of October. Now at this stage, I'm not, I'm not making a sale, I don't want any money. I don't, we don't know how many places I've got left. I emailed Gia, who manages it, and she said, I think we could take another five. Um, there are a few booked. Um, she thinks one may pull out. So she thinks we've got five places. Uh, now, there's the email from... Oh, can't see it. There's the email from Gia there. So, um, you know, it's likely that a good few thousand people are going to end up seeing this video. Um, we have 30 or 40 live. They'll, it'll get three, four, five thousand views as, you know, as two or three days go by. Um, and I can take maybe five of you. So at this stage, I just want you to put your name uh, in the video. Just tag yourself and say, I'm interested in considering the boot camp. I'm not going to tell you the price now because I want you to do it because you want to write a book and not for the money. But what I can tell you is it is way less than you'd think um, because I'm already going on holiday anyway. So I don't need to charge five thousand pounds, which I probably should. When you work it out per day, it's really good value. Um, and it works economically for me because, um, you know, if we have 10 of you or whatever. Um, and I just want to help you get your book out there. So just put your name, say, yep, I'm interested in understanding about the Book Writing Bootcamp. You need to be free 19th to the 29th. You can't be come for three or four days. You can't do half of it. I won't accept that even if you paid the full price because you have to have your book, Edit One, written. I don't let you go until that's done. Otherwise, you know, like it's very my integrity of the information I deliver and the guarantees I give and the... So the concept of the book writing bootcamp is like no other book writing course because they all tell you how to write a book and I get you to write a fucking book. So that, <laughs> that, that course has got a good concept. So pick your name, just um, tell me that you're interested. Uh, then what I'll probably do is I'll, have, I'll probably personally have an initial chat either via messenger or even we'll book a phone call. I'll gauge your seriousness. Um, it can be any concept. It can be fiction or non-fiction. I mean, my expertise is in fiction, but I've written nine books. That you know, most people on the planet haven't written one, and I've written nine. So I say this humbly, but I know how to write books. I know how to get long, difficult, deep concepts like money and property investing, and leverage out. I know how to take two hundred and fifty thousand words and edit it down to one hundred and sixty-five thousand words. I now know book, the book length it should be roughly. So if you give me a concept, I could roughly tell you what the book length should be. I could save you hundreds of hours in the, you know, in the, the, the launch to write in the book because I just used to write. And God, the editing and going through reams and reams of stuff and getting so lost in it and 
giving up and not having any help and support and not keeping myself accountable. So, there are 13 kind of things I'd like you to think about when you're writing your book, uh, or you to write your book. So the first is the concept, which I've talked about a lot in this video. What's the theme? What's the big promise? What does it deliver? Is it clear? Is it sticky? Is it memorable? Is it viral? Is it a bit disruptive? Is it contrarian? Is it a surprise? Is it a new take on an existing thing? The next thing then is based on the concept, which you need to get into a very small sentence or just a couple of words, is uh, the, a title brainstorm. Uh, and titles ideally should be short, and I've made longer ones uh, that have been a mistake. And um, three words is often good. If you can do it in two or one, that's great, as long as it says what it does. Um, but I've put here one to four words, and you want a title that um, is memorable, is shareable, is clear, is concise, and also says what it does, and also you've tested already that people will buy based on that title. You know I do a lot of title testing on all of the um, communities I'm in. The, 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 the next thing you need to think about is the purpose of the book. Is it a lead magnet for a course? Is it a standalone book in its own right and you want it to be a, you know, a global bestseller because you want to be an author? Is it the, what people call your business card? You know, so it's a way to showcase your business and be, you know, be searchable on all of the engines. Um, is it niche and specific to back up your business or the thing that you do? Or is it more generic? Is it an expression of your creativity or is it a, a driven business purpose? You need to be clear on that. The next thing then, number four, is the subtitles, brainstorming the subtitles, and that would be one to three sexy benefits. So a subtitle should add to the title. Now, if you've got a great, strong concept and a great title, you might not need a subtitle. Um, so let's have a look at the two I've written. So life leverage is how to get more done in less time, outsource everything, create your ideal mobile lifestyle. Now, I couldn't get in a title, obviously, but life leverage does what it says on the tin. So that's three benefits. And then money is no more, make more, give more. Now, the original subtitle was the, the story, psychology and history. No more, make more and give more. But the, actually the head of Hachette, the MD, the head honcho of the second biggest publisher in the world said it needs to be shorter. So um, I listen to you, boss. Sell me millions, I will listen to you. Okay, right, now let's go back then. So the fifth thing is you need to test your headlines and subheadlines. You can't just come up with them. You need to test them. You need to do polls. You need to stress test them. You know, you need to know that the majority of people are going to be um, attracted by the winner. Now, often the winners of the names like money, like life leverage, like property investing secrets. Um, they're not necessarily my favorite titles. That are the ones, all the ones I came up with, but they're the ones that you said you would buy from. I'm here to serve you, not just create my art and not serve you. Okay, uh, then you need a full book brainstorm. Brain dump everything you can think of without judgment, without categorizing it, without second guessing it onto post-it notes. Just, I've got this idea, this idea, I had this story, I had this experience, this analogy, you know, this quote, um, this piece of information, this research study, and you just go, da -da 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 and you dump it out. Too many people are trying to, you know, create the order and sequence and everything in a linear way. You just got to get it all out because then you can piece it together. Okay, then once you've done all of that and that brainstorming exercise, then you'll put it into a Word document. I use two Word documents. I have contents and notes and then the actual manuscript on the other side. And then I sort of put them into one screen. So I've got the one I'm working on on the left and then my references and notes and contents on the right. So I can always refer between the two. That seems to work for me. Uh, and then once you've done that, you start writing your book. Uh, and then when you're writing your book, you need to think about the formula and order of the book. So is it, for example, um, the Pentagon system, which we teach on our speaker course? Is it a diary? Is it a memoir? Is it an autobiography? By the way, you should never write an autobiography unless you're famous or you're a celebrity, you have got an amazing story. Save it. I know people are writing autobiographies and they're like, they haven't got their story isn't finished or they're too young or, or whatever. So, um, you know, you only really get one autobiography or if you've done amazingly well in your life, you'll get two. So, um, you know, and that's very rare. So save your autobiography. Is it a how-to book? Is it a step-by-step -step system, etc.? 
So while you've got the document open, while you're thinking of the formula and the format and the type of book, on a parallel universe, you want to be doing all of your research. I outsource my research to my researcher, but I've probably done a bit of it a few months before. Because how have I come up with the idea for the book? So if we go back to some of the concepts that I explained, if we go, you know, how have I come up with the idea of the paradox principle or um, how to do what you know or dealing with haters or critics, haters and you, the generalist specialist, the paradox of balance. How have I come up with all of these concepts? Well, I've probably been studying them and researching them and struggling with um you know them in my life i mean often people like me who are teaching you stuff and you know people authors who write books we're solving our own problems and scratching our own itch so i've probably already done a few years worth of research you know and and, and i've formulated the concept over time and i find that those ones are stronger and they have more depth okay Fine. Uh, now, you definitely want to outsource getting the quotes, the studies, the references, the data, the survey, the proof. You know, if there's anything contentious in my book, I want to prove it. If there's anything surprising, I need to prove it. I need stats and research. Never used to be one for that, but that's important. And you also want to think of how would a critic review... Blimey. What on earth was that? Um, so you want to think about, you, you want to also, when in the editing process, go through and read it as if you're a critic and pick it all apart. And then you want to go and get the research to prove it. Um, you want to get your design concept. So I, I like to have a concept, money, and then say uh, to a designer, come up with 10 different concepts. And I'll go and look at the best um, covers of books that I really like. I never cop any, but I just say I like them. I like this one because it's clear. I like the... the, the um, the concept of this, I like the colours of this, I like the text of this. So life leverage, this is quite a strong concept of a visual design. Um, you know, the, the balance of the scales. Um, I never would have been able to come up with anything like that because it's too classy and too simple and elegant. None of those I am. Uh, so yeah, you, you want to make sure that you're getting all of your designs and concepts. And do that early in the process of the book. Because as you go through the book, you're writing the book, you're doing the concept. Like, you know... A, um, I'm a big fan of Radiohead and they take real care over the order of their songs and they're doing the artwork as well as the editing of the music and it's all part of the theatre, it's all part of the thing. Your book is a piece of art, it's everything, it's the title, it's the subtitle, it's the content, it's the quality, it's the, you know, it's the, the, the blurb on the back, it's the typeface, it's the design, it's the feel, it's all of those things. So you want to do them all together, if you do them at different points, you, know, you want to do them in parallel universes. So you've got these four or five things going on. If you do them at different points, that'll all be um, fractious again, that word. Uh, all right, there's a few more, but I'll save them for another video because we've been going on, what are we now? Wow, this is nearly an hour. This is nearly an hour. This is supposed to be a quick live feed. I hope you've got some value out of it and it hasn't just been a circular um, nebulous rant. Don't forget to leave your name below if you're committed to writing your book. If you're not committed to actually writing it, if you're one of these personal development e coursey junkies who love to go on courses and spend money learning stuff but you never do, then coming on the Book Writing Bootcamp is not for you. Will there be a bit of pain going on the Book Writing Bootcamp? Yes. Will you have moments of writer's block? Yes. Will you feel like you do a few sessions you only get a few hundred words out? Yes. Will you look at Paul O'Mahony next to you who's done a thousand in his quick Irish manner? Yes. Um, but will we get to the end and you've got a book written? Yes. One person at the last year's Book Writing Bootcamp wrote, wrote 90,000 words in 10 days. You can do it too. I promise you, and this isn't a nice promise to make, but I just know it, you will not have written your full book by the time the Book Writing Bootcamp ends if you don't come on the Book Writing Bootcamp because there's just too many variables in the way. So leave your name. The dates are the 19th to the 29th of October. It'll be at the Woburn Centre Parks. Um, the price is unbelievably good value, but it's not free and it is an investment of time and money. And then um, we're going to take about five, give or take. Um, it may end up being four if this person, because this person's got a date clash who may not be able to make it. And um, there'll be some really um, good authors there. You know, a few of our trainers are writing books. Um, so you'll have a good diverse range and you'll have some smart people there to brainstorm with. We'll be doing loads of work together. Also, I run a, some content for a day on how to market your book and get your book out there, you know, like a bit of critique of me as I promote my books a lot, but I sell a lot of books and, um, you know, I want to sell a lot of books and I want you to sell a lot of books. You don't want to put those hundreds or thousands of hours in and not sell any books. What a waste of time. 
And you know, some people say to me, oh, well, I'm just writing a book because it's a business card. I just want to use it as a business card. No, write a book and sell fucking loads. Don't use it as a business card and give it away for free. That is stupid advice. Who the fuck's telling you that? Write a book that could sell a million copies. Now, I've written nine books, and I reckon of those nine books, three of them could sell million or millions of copies. Six of them couldn't because they're not the right niche or they're not a clear enough, strong enough concept. So it took me a few books of writing books that would sell maybe, first off, thousands and then tens of thousands and then break the hundreds of thousands. Now I know in my um, library of books that I've written, three of them could sell millions of copies. And I want to help you do that. And I'll give you all of that um, education, inspiration, guidance, support. Um, so yeah, all right, great. So thanks for tuning in. I have no idea how many questions we've had because they don't pop up or... Um, all right, wow, there's a lot. There's a hell of a lot. What is it they say in America now? A fuck ton of them. All right, great. So thanks for tuning in. It's now nine o'clock. Um, so um, uh, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything. Pop any questions on here. I'll check tomorrow morning nice and early. I'll answer any as we go. I know some people would have missed this video, so they'll be watching it. Um, it's, it's not live now. So ping me any questions you've got. I'll come in and keep this thread running for a few days. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot, everyone. See you soon.